Welcome to the Tech for Tiny's iPad integration in the primary classroom session with Teaching with Tech Online Conference 2018. Hi, I'm Brittany, the face behind Technically It's Kinder. Let me start off by sharing a little bit about myself. I'm a self-proclaimed digital educator. I have over 10 years experience in kindergarten, and for the past four years, I've taught in a one-to-one -one iPad kindergarten classroom. I enjoy sharing my passion and knowledge for technology integration with others. When I'm not teaching, I enjoy time with family and friends, shopping, watching reality TV, and fulfilling my duties as a gymnastics and dance mom. Let's talk about the objectives of today's session. We're going to explore features and benefits of Seesaw, discuss how to app smash using various applications, and I'm going to share ideas of how to enhance lessons and engage students while using technology. I'm often asked why I use Seesaw, and here are the reasons. It saves time on organizing content. You're able to use the folders and the calendar view, which we'll discuss a little later in the session. You're also able to create a device workflow solution where you can send your students activities and tasks and they can complete them and send them right back to you within the same platform. I can create easy formative assessments. You can give instant student feedback. It can provide a safe place to teach 21st century skills. Students have an authentic audience when using Seesaw, sharing their work with peers, educators, families, and the world. Once a student has submitted work for review, educators receive an instant notification and they are able to review, approve, and leave a comment. Once a task is approved, peers are able to view if the teacher wishes to enable this feature under Settings. Families are notified as well through the Seesaw for Families app. There is also an option to connect with students and educators around the world using the Seesaw blog feature. You may be wondering what students can do within the Seesaw app. Here you see the features available within the app. Take a photo using the camera, record a video, create a drawing, insert or add a file. Yes, Google Drive is available. Taking notes, which only includes typing text or adding a link to a website. One of my favorite features is folders. You may organize folders in any way you wish. Some suggestions are by subject or even standards. It's beneficial to color code folders for primary students who may not be able to read the folder headings. Educators are able to browse work from the entire class or for a single student within the folder setting. Let's discuss student login. There are two options when logging into Seesaw. One is a QR code. The other is signing in by email. If you are a primary teacher, K2, I highly suggest the QR code option. Students sign in by using the QR class code within the application. This code is given to you once your class is generated. Keep a few copies of the code around your classroom for easy accessibility to students in case for some reason the students are logged out. Here you will see an example of the calendar view I discussed earlier. Educators have the accessibility to use the calendar view to have insight on the dates assignments were submitted by students. If you click on the date, all the assignments submitted that particular day will appear. This makes Seesaw a great tool for parent-teacher conferences or student-led conferences. Enabling the three magic buttons is the key to having students edit templates through Seesaw. Follow the steps to enable these settings before sending tasks for students to complete. When completing tasks in Seesaw, I at times submit templates for students to complete. This is not a requirement. Giving students voice and choice on tasks using tools within Seesaw works just fine, but if you find that templates are needed as a guide, follow these steps. Let me share how I submit templates to students. If the resource you wish to use is a PDF, simply save it in iBooks. You'll select the resource, find the page you wish to use, Tap so that the words go away and simply take a screenshot. Now that the resource is saved to your camera roll, you'll go out of iBooks and into Seesaw. We'll hit the green add button, post to student journal, camera roll, select the image that you wish for students to edit, if you'd like to use any of the features here, you may do so before submitting to students. 
Green check mark. I would not tag a student because the families would be notified only seeing a blank template. Green check mark. Select a folder if you wish for it to be shared within a folder. And check the green check mark. Once it is uploaded, students will see it in their feed. And here are the three magic buttons I was telling you of. Select the three magic buttons and the students will pick copy and edit. Now you see more options here because this is in the teacher view. So copy and edit. And students are able to edit the resource right here. They can draw. They can type. There are different styles to choose from as well. You can also have the students record their thinking. Toast has the first sound t. Once they're finished, It will process the video and the teacher will be able to view it. They'll select their class name right here. This is only a, um, a sample of a class. So if I were student number 14, check here. And the teacher will get notification of the completed task and it will be ready for review. Let's take a look at tasks completed by students using templates that were assigned to them in Seesaw. Students show their understanding of sentences that have been dictated to them through a voice recording. They then were able to create an illustration, type, write, and record themselves all while practicing reading with fluency. Here you will also see a quick informal phonics assessment where students were expected to correctly write or type given words and then record their thinking to show understanding. The same method of editing templates was used in these images as well. Using emojis was a hit with students, not only because of the novelty, but because they could freely use appropriate emojis when wanted, and it took away the stress of drawing an image, saving time and frustration. Ask yourself what the goal is. Finding a balance of digital and paper pencil is important to keep in mind. Teachers often check for understanding by having students complete a cut and paste activity. While these activities certainly have a place in the classroom, I am able to quickly prepare this type of activity using Seesaw. I am also able to differentiate by tagging particular students to specific activities. Let's take a look at how these are created. I'm going to show you how to use the label feature in Seesaw to make different kinds of scrambles. So the first thing you want to do is go to the drawing. And you're going to go to the text. You're going to start typing. So for instance, if you were making the word the, you're going to type T. You can change the style. You can change the size. We'll do the next letter H. I'm going to move it somewhere else. E. And if I wanted to add the word and, A. N. So we'll just stop here for the sake of time. Then you're simply going to press the green check mark. Press it again. So uh, here, I just press the green check mark. Unless you want to send it to particular students, I just press the green check mark again. You could put it in a folder if you would like. So if I wanted to put it in the sight word folder. And then your students would be able to see it in the feed view. So once your students are in the feed view, they'll press the three magic buttons, which are here. Press copy and edit. And then your students will be able to manipulate these labels by pressing the text box. 
then tapping the screen and moving or well, pressing text box and moving the labels about. But this is how you create scrambles in Seesaw. It is important to note that Seesaw allows up to 50 labels at this time. Be cautious of the task and how many characters it may take for students to complete tasks within the application. When recording audio and videos within Seesaw, keep the following limits in mind. Audio recordings, 5 minutes. Comments, 2 minutes. Videos, 5 minutes. I want to take a minute to discuss some questions I received from educators. Isn't this just a digital worksheet? Why not just do it on paper? Well, in terms of planning lessons and our activities, let's think of how much time we spend copying and preparing materials. In my opinion, when I'm able to become more efficient in preparing tasks, I become more effective, having more time to prepare, plan, and reflect, not copy, cut, staple, or paste. Also, when completing tasks on paper, students are not always given the freedom to be creative or explain their thinking. Every student's completed product looks the same. What's engaging about that? And for those of you who know about Hattie's effect size, we know that feedback is important. We all know those papers get stuffed in our teacher bags for days, or better yet, in the recycle bin. But if I can take five minutes to type or record instant feedback from the comfort of my couch after school, then why not make it digital? Here you'll see the same task completed by different students. They have a voice and choice. I am also able to gauge what they truly know when students use a record feature to explain their thinking. Pick Collage or Picky to You is my favorite app to use with Seesaw. This app allows students to be creative using tools such as web search, stickers, and text. You will receive more information about this app in the PDF that supplements this session. Let's watch some clips from videos students created using Pick Collage and Seesaw. Shark, shoes, fish, shower, shirt. In the beginning, the little red hen planted the seed. In the middle, the dog and the duck and the cats kept saying, not I. And at the, at the end, the little red hen ate the bread all by yourself. Let's talk about templates and pick collage. You're going to select freestyle, go to photos, find the image that you have selected for your students to use as a background. If you look here, you'll see that it moves all about. You don't want that for students because once they place images on top, it'll be a problem. So what we'll do is tap tap and set it as the background. Now we're ready to add images on top. So, if we're looking for pictures that have the first sound t, we could use the web search feature to find a picture of a tiger. Now, since we are talking about using these templates with primary students, um, you could have them use a speech to text feature. But here, I'm just going to save some time and type in tiger. I'm going to search, find the picture of a tiger, select the check mark, and put it in the box okay they could also doodle a picture so if i want to draw a picture of a tomato okay or what if i have a tomato that i want to take a picture of you simply go into photos and select camera Take a picture of the tomato, use photo, hit done. Not sure what happened there, but here is my picture of my tomato. So when your students are finished, they'll hit done, save it to their library, 
which is going to save it to their camera roll. The most profound app smash that has happened in my classroom has to be that of Pit Collage and Epic. If you're an educator and do not have an account with Epic, just think about it as the Netflix of digital books. Reading comprehension has been a focus with my students. After read allows, I would ask comprehension questions or assign tasks to my students. They would often become frustrated because they wanted to reference the book, but how many copies of a read aloud do teachers usually have? That's right, just one. So using Epic allowed me to get a copy of the text in every student's hand. In primary grades, or K2, we often ask students to illustrate in response to a question of, about a text. Again, anxiety can hinder the student who feels as if their picture is not adequate or they cannot recall parts of the text without a book in their hand. The focus is then on the image and not the response. Taking screenshots of text with an epic, adding them to graphic organizers and pic collage, uploading and recording their thinking quickly changes what students express about their understanding of a text. Many often ask about the use of manipulatives in my classroom. Yes, I continue to implement best practices in what I know is best for kids. But again, let's be honest. When students are asked to use manipulatives, do you walk around with your clipboard checking each student off? If so, that is wonderful. But how long does that take you? Are you giving meaningful feedback and having conversations with each student? What are your other students doing during this time? Why not have them take a picture so that you can truly take a look and give each student feedback, all while implementing best practices? If I could only download four apps on student devices, these would be my top four. Seesaw, Pit Collage, Epic, and Shadow Puppet. Let me discuss why I'm fond of each application. Seesaw allows teachers to create digital portfolios in a device workflow. Students can submit tasks that have been completed from various apps. Pit Collage allows students to be creative using built-in tools such as web search and stickers. Pit Kiss is the student version of Pit Collage and does not allow for social media sharing. Epic provides free accounts for educators with thousands of digital books with various genres and topics. Shadow Puppet is also free and allows students to create videos by voicing over images from their camera roll. When you receive the PDF for this session, you will be able to view more ideas and additional apps I use with K2 students. Be sure to click and access the links. I encourage you to connect with me on social media for more technology integration ideas. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to stay in touch.